Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem for x. So a is a given number and we're going to be solving this equation for x. Now I'll be presenting two methods and I think they're both interesting. I'll also show you a graph at the end. All right, let's get started. First method, I'm going to expand everything. So that's going to give me a squared minus 2ax squared plus x to the fourth equals a plus x. Now let's go ahead and put everything on the same side, a squared minus 2ax squared plus x to the fourth minus a minus x equals zero. So x is to the fourth power, so that's quartic, but if you look at a, which is what makes this problem, I think, really interesting, because this is a problem with a parameter, a is a given number, we're not solving for a, we're solving for x, but we can pretend to solve for a first. That's what's cool about this. So we're going to write this as a quadratic in A, because it's quadratic in A. Make sense? Let's do it. So we're going to put these two together, so A squared. The coefficient of A is what you need to focus on, negative 2x squared and minus 1. So we're going to put a minus sign here, and then put this right as 2x squared plus 1, and all of that is multiplied by A. Notice that there's a negation here, which makes both of these negative. And then x to the fourth minus x is going to be a constant, with respect to a. Make sense? This is our quadratic. Let's go ahead and solve this, and what is the best way to solve a quadratic? Quadratic formula. So let's use it. a equals negative b, which is 2x squared plus 1, plus minus the square root of b squared, so I'm going to write this as 2x squared plus 1 squared first, and then expand it, minus 4ac. a is 1. By the way, a is the coefficient of a squared in this case, which is weird, but 4 times this, so that's going to be 4 times x to the 4th minus x, square root of all of that, and that's divided by 2, right? This looks complicated, but we're going to simplify it, don't worry, and things are going to simplify a great deal. First of all, let's focus on the inside here, the radical, but what's inside? So it's going to be our discriminant, right? So delta is going to be 4x to the 4th plus 4x squared plus 1, if you expand it, minus 4x to the 4th, plus 4x. Great. 4x to the 4th cancels out, and then we end up with 4x squared plus 4x plus 1, which you can write as a perfect square, and that's perfect. This is 2x plus 1 quantity squared. Isn't that beautiful? Now, so, uh, delta, or discriminant, is a perfect square, which means the solutions are going to be nice. So if you go ahead and plug this in here, you're going to get a equals 2x squared plus 1 as the negative b, plus minus, since you're going to square root this, it's going to become 2x plus 1. Of course, plus minus sign is going to take care of both uh, roots and divide by 2. Now, let's go ahead and split this up into two pieces. Notice that we're supposed to solve for x, but pretend we're solving for a, and now we're going to flip it, okay? So, let's go with the plus sign first, plus 2x plus 1, divide by 2. That's going to give me 2x squared plus 2x plus 2 divided by 2, everything x squared plus x plus 1. Awesome. Let's hold on to that for now, and then go with the minus sign. And with the minus sign, the 1 is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with x squared minus x. Now, notice that these are a values. How can you flip them? Easy. T set this equal to a. And set this equal to a. Make sense? Now they become in terms of x. So basically, by solving the quartic in x as a quadratic in a, gave us two quadratics in x. Hmm, interesting. Let's go ahead and write those. x squared plus x, x squared plus x plus 1 minus a, one of the factors, which is equal to 0, of course. And the other one is x squared minus x minus a equals 0. So now we're going to put these two together and solve them separately. Here, you're going to use the quadratic formula twice. Let's use it on the first one first. x equals, let's call this first one and let's call the second one. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac. That's going to give you plus 4a minus 4. And we can basically write this as 4a minus 3, but that's going to be the next step. Negative 1 plus minus the square root of 4a minus 3 over 2. That's one of the x values, or two of the x values. And from the second equation, we get even a simpler one, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, plus 4a 
divided by 2a, 2, okay? So those are the solutions, and this gives us four solutions, which is normal because this is a quartic equation in x. Make sense? Solutions look somewhat complicated, but we're going to take a look at it. I'll show you a graph which kind of explains how this works out, okay? Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. So for my second method, I'm going to follow a very different approach, which is substitution. Because this is a special type of equation, I'm going to do the following. Let's go ahead and call this y, and then that gives us y squared equals a plus x. Awesome, right? And then since we call that y, that gives us another equation, which is y equals a minus x squared. Awesome. Now, we can solve for a from both of these equations and get rid of a, or we can just subtract and get rid of however you want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and isolate a from here. It's y squared minus x, and from here a is going to be y plus x squared. Now, when two things are equal to the same thing, then they are equal. So these two things are equal. Let's set them equal to each other. y squared minus x equals y plus x squared. At this point, this equation probably seems meaningless, but we're going to put everything on the same side and factor it, and everything is going to be awesome. So subtract y, or maybe x squared first, and then subtract y. Notice that y squared minus x squared is a difference of two squares. So we can write it as y plus x times y minus x. And then negative x minus y, we can plot a negative 1 and write it as x plus y. And now, x plus y is a common factor. We can take it out, because y plus x is the same. And then we get y minus x minus 1 as the second factor. Now, this is factored. There are two variables, but don't worry about it. Everything is going to be great. Because y is something in terms of x, so we're going to be able to back substitute. You see that? Okay. Now, from here we get two results. One of them is y equals negative x. And the, the other one is y minus x equals 1, or y equals x plus 1, doesn't matter, however you want to write it. Now, let's go ahead and back substitute. What is y? y is a minus x squared. Let's replace it with a minus x squared, and we get this equation. Let's replace y with a minus x squared, and then we're going to get another equation. Remember these? Do they look familiar? from the first method, right? Yes, of course, we're going to arrive at something similar, but in a different way, don't you think? Now let's put everything on the same side, x squared minus x minus a equals 0, and x squared plus x plus 1 minus a equals 0. So we got the same quadratics, and we're going to solve them, let's do it. I mean, no big deal, one more time we can do it. 1 plus minus the square root of 1 plus 4a divided by 2. And then the second one is going to give us negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. I think if you copy from the first method, they gave us 4a minus 3 under the radical, and all of that is divided by 2. So that gave us two, four solutions in total. And notice that x depends on a. So a is a given number. When a is, for example, 5, you can pretty much find what the solutions are going to be, right? Let's plug it in. We're going to get... 1 plus minus the square root of uh, 21 divided by 2, and x equals negative 1. If you do 20 minus 13, that's going to be 20 minus 3. It's going to be 17, and you're going to get the other solution. See, for every a value, pretty much, we have a solution. But there are some conditions. For example, if this is negative or this is negative, then we're going to run into problems. So we kind of have to talk about the domain of a, which I'm not going to get into, but instead, I want to show you the graph. You can figure that out, right? Here's the graph of these two functions, which is kind of interesting. Obviously, they are both parametric, depend on uh, a, the choice of a. But in this case, I just wanted to, I had to fix a, I had to pick a fixed value. But based on this value, as you can see, I marked two of the solutions, and they come from here. Of course, there is two more other solutions which were not marked on the graph. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.